welcome to my YouTube channel where every episode I take a physics topic and really try to explain it in a simple and understandable way. Now some episodes are just going to be fun physics facts but most I'm going to try to tie in to the current school curriculum so when that's the case I'm going to put the key stage in the episode title. So today's episode is a sort of follow on from my episode about the Doppler effect so if you haven't watched that yet then please go back and do so because it's a really good foundation for what I'm going to cover today which is redshift. And guys it's a way cooler topic than it sounds. Your minds are about to be blown. I explained in my Doppler episode that when the source of a sound wave is moving, a stationary observer will notice a change in frequency and wavelength. So like when an ambulance is moving towards you, the siren's frequency will be higher and the wavelength will be shorter than when it's past you and is moving away from you. Well, this doesn't just happen with sound waves, it happens with all waves, so light waves too. Electromagnetic waves are a type of transverse wave. So electromagnetic waves, or EM waves as the cool kids call them, are created as a result of vibrations between an electric field and a magnetic field. In other words, EM waves are composed of oscillating electric and magnetic fields. And we have an electromagnetic spectrum with all seven different types of electromagnetic waves on it. Each EM wave has a different wavelength and has different properties. So they're grouped according to their wavelengths, but they actually form one long continuous spectrum. At one end, with the long wavelength, the low frequency and the low energy, we have the radio waves. I run out. These then turn into microwaves, then infrared, then bang, right in the middle, visible light, and then ultraviolet, then x-rays, and then finally, right at the end, with the shortest wavelength, the highest frequency, and the highest energy, we have the gamma rays. Woo -woo. Now within visible light, there are a whole spectrum of colours which are displayed whenever we see a rainbow. Well, these different colours of visible light have different wavelengths too. Starting with red, which has the lower frequency and the longer wavelength, all the way up to violet, which has the higher frequency and the shorter wavelength. So think back to the Doppler shift, with the sound waves bunching up in front of the source and spreading out behind it. Well, this applies to light too. So when a light source is moving away from you, the waves will have a lower frequency and a longer wavelength, so they'll move towards the red end of the spectrum and they will appear more red. Therefore, this is called redshift. And when a light source is moving towards you, the waves will have a higher frequency and a shorter wavelength, so we'll move towards the blue end of the spectrum and appear bluer. This is called blue shift. These terms aren't just used for the visible light spectrum, they can be used across the whole electromagnetic spectrum. So like if radio waves are shifted towards the ultraviolet part of the spectrum, then they will be blue shifted because they're shifting towards the higher frequencies. And if gamma rays are shifted towards the lower frequency radio waves end of the spectrum, then they are said to be red shifted. This is all pretty cool, huh? But here's the truth bomb that is about to blow your minds. When scientists observe galaxies in space from Earth, they appear redshifted. So we observe light with a longer wavelength than we expect the stars to emit. What? They're all traveling away from us. And not only are galaxies redshifted, but the galaxies further away from us have a larger redshift so it seems that the further the galaxy is away from us, the quicker they're travelling. This means that the universe is expanding. Everything is travelling away, but into what? So redshift means that our universe is expanding. That's a scary thought. Like, travelling into what? Like, how can we get any bigger? So was there a limit before that's being expanded? Or is there just no limit and will carry on expanding forever? Anyways, all these questions are just too much for me. 
All we need to know for now is that we observe galaxies from Earth that are redshifted, so are travelling away from us. And lastly, let's just quickly cover the equation for redshift. We have the change in wavelength divided by the reference wavelength is equal to the velocity of a galaxy divided by the speed of light. So it will look something like this. Here, the change in wavelength will be the redshifted wavelength that we've measured minus the reference wavelength. And the reference wavelength is the wavelength of light that was actually emitted from the galaxy before it was redshifted. And it does look a bit complicated, but if we rearrange the equation to this, we can calculate the velocity that the galaxy is moving away from us. So now we have the velocity of the galaxy equals the change in wavelength over the reference wavelength multiplied by the speed of light, which is a super useful equation to work out how quickly everything is traveling away from us. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you want to learn about other cool physics facts, then please like and subscribe and watch all of my other videos. And if you want to learn about a specific topic, please leave a comment below and I'll try to do a video for you.